Hey, what is going on guys? Today I'm going to show you an efficient herb run guide for RuneScape 3. These runs will average 1.5 mil of run, and it will take anywhere between 3 and 5 minutes. Just a quick note, you can do a herb run every 80 minutes and there are 7 patches. When you're waiting to make teams, for bosses, do your herb runs. Do it in between slayer tasks, do it with your dailies. Just get them in because otherwise you're just going to be bank standing doing nothing. Okay, so here's the preset that I use for my farm runs. In the description, I'll go into further detail on each item and provide alternatives if you don't have these. However, for now, I'm going to talk about which items you need to maximize your profits. Firstly, you want your highest tier Greenfinger's Aura. These can be obtained by loyalty points in the Solomon store. You want to use Juju Farming Potions. The perfect ones do not work. However, these basically give you a 1 in 3 chance of getting double herbs, so they're huge. Uh, Magic Secretaries give you an invisible boost to yield. And finally the farming cape which can note all of your produce hence save time and make you more profit per hour. Now the route that you take isn't too important. The only thing that I'd recommend is if you're having trouble getting all of your patches done before your juju farming potion runs out. Take a look at some of the uh, additional things that I do in my run to save time like bladed dive into spots, teleporting as soon as you can etc. Uh, and also you want to end your farm run. In the wilderness, I like to go to Priftinus on my second to last one because it's close to a bank. I bank all of my noted herbs and anything else I don't want to lose before going to the wilderness, and I'd advise you doing the same. Okay, so now let's get into the herb run itself. Firstly, don't forget to activate your Greenfinger's Aura and drink your Juju Farming Potion. I like to start a Trollheim because it's the furthest one away, especially if you haven't got the Lunar Teleport to get here. Speaking of which, there's two main methods to get here. You can unlock the Lunar Teleport by doing Livid Farm, or you can actually just use the regular spellbook Troll Arm Teleport if you've done Edgar's Rouge, I believe. And it costs two lore and two fire to teleport there, and you have to just traverse the mountain to get there. Next up, we have Cannabis. To get to this spot, you can use the Master Farming Mask, or the Farmer Mask with the add-on. Once you've used all three of these, you can use your Ecto File, which you get from the Ghost Ahoy quest. Third spot, unfortunately it died in this case, but it's the Valador farm. You can get here infinite amount of times using the Explorer's Ring 3 or 4. I'd recommend getting this. If not, your next best alternative is the Draenor Manor Lodestone. Next we have the Ardi farm. It's a lot easier to get to nowadays since we have unlimited teleports using the Mana farm teleport. If you don't have this, you can use an Ardone cloak from doing the RD diaries, of course. Next up, we have Cathaby. You actually get free teleports here a day using a botanist mask. If you don't have this or you've run out of charges, just simply use the Cathaby lodestone. It's right next to it. I believe there's a lunar teleport here too, but the lodestone with quick tellies is really fast anyways, so it isn't going to save you much time. A second to last, we have the Priftinus herb patch. I like to choose this one second to last, as I said because there's a bank right next to it that you can use quickly because after this you're going to be going to the wilderness uh, there's two main methods to get here you can use a regular teleport seed, crystal teleport seed or the attuned which has infinite teleports or if you don't have either of them use the priftinus lodestone like I said I like to bank here because obviously you don't want to lose all the herbs you've just picked in the wilderness and then I'd only recommend doing the Wilderness one if you have the sword, which I think you need it to unlock it anyways, I could be wrong. But teleport there, pick your herbs, plant your bloodweed. For some reason I planted spirits here previously, I think I was testing something out. But it's best to always do your bloodweed seeds here. Also, if you're going to be planting these regularly, I'd recommend buying them from the bandit camp for 50k in the Wilderness. As they're a lot cheaper than on the GE itself. And that's pretty much it for the herb run. It, like, it only takes between 3 and 4 minutes if you're fast. Which can help really boost your profits. Now that you know the route, let's uh, talk about profit. So the average herbs you get per patch, assuming death rate of just under 5% I believe with Ultra Compost, is 14.5. And if it's disease free, which two patches are in the game, this goes up to 15.2. So because of this, the average herbs you get per run is actually 102. We can use this to work out a profit per run of around 1.5 mil, 1.55 with current GE prices. 
and that's assuming a cost of 450k for six spirit seeds and one bloodweed seeds uh, you can actually take 10% off of this cost with the scroll of life I believe and the even more with the master farmer outfit because you have a chance to save seeds that you sow and this works out for an effective profit an hour for 23 mil I know a lot of people are going to say but you can't do this for a full hour but it's lossless anyways because you would you wait in at the bank doing nothing trying to form teams to do your favorite bosses and whatnot uh, i know there's a lot of other things you can add on to this run but i wanted to keep this as short and sweet as i could you can actually add more cello mushrooms onto your run you can use a giant ant and go harvest fruit from your fruit trees you can pick white berries uh, all of these things i can discuss in future videos let me know if you want that i uh, hope you enjoyed anyways and go make some money